The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. Last time I was up here, we we um, we talked about practicing a preference for God, and uh, some of the things that we learned out of that was we were what we were learning was that we need to be Christ-centered, centered with Christ and God, as opposed to self-centered, because everything that is not Christ-centered is self-centered, right? Um, there was some things to chew on from the first one. Um, we we. Um, we learned about comfort level, and if you're you're unaware that there's a possibility of intimacy with God, or deeper intimacy with God, that um, you may be lacking that, uh, or comfortable where you're at, uh, so to speak. You could lack vulnerability, which is a possible hindrance towards intimacy with God. You could have desires that aren't to your benefit, but not to God's benefit. Um, you could even desire good things, answers to your problems. But if those desires take precedence over relationship with the Lord, um, then you're going more towards off of, off of Jesus-centered and focused and on the self-centered. You could have agendas, a cause that you're, that you're really promoting, or a ministry even, or something else that God gave you, even a dream or a prophetic promise. But if you're chasing the dream over desiring his presence, then we're off, right? And that's what we kind of pulled in from last time um, that I was up here and spoke. This is going to be part two. And what we're going to, we're going to look at is we were pretty much primarily looking at intimacy and building intimacy and staying in intimacy with God um, in the first one. And this one is we're going to be talking more about depth. And intimacy actually requires depth and going deeper in, in the things of the Lord. And we're going to understand, we, you know, we know the intimacy now, now that we went through the message. And of course, all of you did every step in that message that I preached the last time, right? Everybody's on the right track. Um, we're practicing a preference for God. Um, we're desiring nothing but Him, Right? Um, nothing over him, uh, but to be a pleasure to him, to minister unto him like the, the sons of Zadok. We're doing that, right? Everything's right as rain. Everything is great. Until what happens is the rain stops or becomes less frequent. You have to work for it. Hearing him might become more laborious than you know it was uh, at, a t at certain times in our lives um, where we can hear God very clearly, sometimes those things wane and we actually have to work to hear, especially with all the distractions that are going on in the world right now, um, at any time really, but right now is one of the, one of the harder things to, to stay focused and Christ-centered instead of just news-focused and media-focused and social media focused, right? The distractions seem to scream louder around us than his tangible presence. And it seems to sometimes you really just have to work for it in your prayer time. And that's common and it's throughout our, our, our Christian walk that, that we do have times in the wilderness types experiences now, there, there are two different things that happen. There's two possibilities that you could be experiencing this wilderness or drought time, uh, which we've, I think, experienced in the last five years, it feels like, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> for some of us. One is that you're, you're just in sin. You, you, you have a, you're constantly in repetitive, unrepentant sin, and you are now... The, the presence of God is just separate, it's just 
you you don't feel it anymore. Um, you've grown you've grown hard, and you know um, the separation that you feel because of sin. It actually says it in Proverbs eighteen one. He who isolates himself pursues his own selfish desires, and he rebels against all sound judgment. Well, then we go back to self. You separate yourself, you sin, you, you're doing what you want to do, and you're not repentant, right? That's, a, that's the exact opposite of what we want and that we talked about in the first message. It's not being Christ-focused at all. That's self-centeredness. Or the second possibility out of the two is that God may actually have you there for a purpose, for his plans and purposes. He might have you in the wilderness for a season or a difficult season for something that he has planned for you. And you know what, there's two, there, there's more than probably two different, but there's main, the, the two main responses that you can have are, well, God has me here, this for the first one, God has me here and uh, I can't really do anything about it. So I'm just going to wait for him to come and take me out of it. Because only he can do that, right? He put me here. He can, he's the only one that can take me out. Or the more uh, appropriate way is that, you know, realize that God has you there in this possibly dry season. And it's not for no reason. It's for his purpose. So... Don't become frustrated and leave. You know, there's some certain people that would say, well, I, I go to Kingdom Life Church, but you know what? The preaching really is dry. I'm not being fed. I'm going to get out of here. But they never really put roots down. And I'm not saying that you can come and go as you want. We're not going to make you stay. But some attitudes... You gotta check your heart first, and if the if if the spirit of God isn't leading you somewhere else, don't go. I would come back to that too, but He doesn't put you in positions where there's it's you're getting a hard time or or a difficult season um, without knowing that there's going to be a benefit to it at some point in your heart. He wants you basically to dig deep. He wants you to stir up the gift of God that's in you. He wants you to bring forth the living water from the wells, the wellspring of life. That's what he wants you to do during those times. If we're placed in the desert, which I would call a training ground by God, and we've seen lots of different experiences, I mean, lots of different examples in scriptures where people are, are, were, were, were taken by God to the deserts, to the wilderness, experiences to the caves to and they all what come back in power jesus came out of the wilderness you know um, all of them had huge exponential growth as far as their character development and what god wanted to do for them and have them be in order to accomplish what his works were supposed to be but if so if god has put you in that particular place and if we respond correctly without any of the seven deadly seas which I can never remember all of them, but one of the ones that, that, that came to mind from the other message was complaining because every time self-centeredness is involved, complaining always happens, all right? That's one deadly seed. There are several, but, you know, just look at the children of Israel. They did them all, unfortunately. If we respond correctly with no deadly seas involved while we were there, he will prepare us for the change that's coming. And it's so amazing how we had a set of songs this morning that pretty much put together my whole, the whole teaching today. It's unbelievable how, how, the, how the lyrics just filled through, uh, filtered through in, in almost exactly the, the same order even. Is what's on my notes. It's pretty neat. God is cool. He wants to prepare us for the change that's coming. He wants to develop the character 
in us that's needed to handle the weight of the new fresh of the, the move of the Holy Spirit that's coming. That's what's, that's what's really happening here. And he, he spoke a little bit, uh, Dad spoke a little bit about it before we started. And, um, and of course, it was in the song, the New Wine song, as well, with, that we left off on at, in worship. But just like plant roots need to grow downward before they grow upward, they need to go down into the earth to find water. We have to dig deep during those times, just like what we're in right now. Depth takes focus, and it takes conscious effort, and sometimes it's not easy. It's kind of like digging a well. Now, if we try to do that in our yard, I mean, our yard is mostly clay and rock, and uh, we've had uh, my, my father-in-law try to put in a few posts um, that looked like it, it just about killed him because our, our, our ground is not soft and fertile and, and uh, we just have crabgrass and, you know, orange clay in our, in our and, it, and it, but it does remind me of, you know, how easy it is to be, become hard-hearted when things aren't as easy. We can just give up and go home. You know, you can't dig, you can't dig deep. You, you take your shovel and you leave. And that's not what God wants us to do right now. God is, is providing the strength for us to do that, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But it's so exciting to hear the prophetic words that are coming forth that are all lining up, that they all are, we're all hearing, especially those of us that come on Tuesday nights, we hear the same things. And we're hearing the same things from, from some of the larger um, uh, well-known prophets and, and things that are, that are going on as, as confirmations just left and right. Um, it's so funny when I, I talk to dad before the services on Tuesday night and we see two or three people come up and say the exact same things that we were discussing in private. It's so amazing what, what God's doing right now. And that's just a taste. And, and just like he said, it has begun. I'll get into that too later, <laughs> which is really cool. So there are two possible reasons separations can occur. One, you're in blatant sin. And two, God has you there, Right. There's two different responses. One, God, you're just going to have to get me out of here. Or two, or I'm going to get out of here. Or two, you realize you dig down deep and, and you move forward in what God wants it, during that time. While I was studying, it was, it was really funny. And this is another confirmation of what, like what I was saying um, that we're getting loads and loads of reconfirmation of different things. But just, I was reading this scripture out of nowhere, just reading the scripture when, during the studies for this, for this message. And the scripture was in numbers and I never am never in numbers, but I was reading it throughout this, this book that I was referring to and numbers 21, 16 and 17. It says, from there, they went to Beer, which is the well where the Lord said, Moses, gather the people together and I will give them water. And then Israel sang this song, which was also part of some of the lyrics today. They sang this song, Spring Up, O Well. And you know what was really funny? And God, has, God does this stuff just to, to make sure that you know that you're on the right path type of, type of thing a lot of times. Is... About three minutes after I read that scripture and was, was talking about a whole different thing to, to Gwen, she's like, you know, when I wake up in the morning for the last like three days, I had this old hymn in my, in, in, you know, in my spirit, in my mind, I, I couldn't get out of my head, it, spring up, oh well. And I was like, I just read that literally three minutes ago. It's right here. I, so I know that that in, in, in the... It's just God is so cool, but it's but he's but it's another thing that people are talking about right now is the the wells and the wells springing forth and 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 this is what this is all about. We're we're going deep. The lyrics to the spring up a well, if you if you didn't know them, are, are pretty pretty fun. 
I've got a river of life flowing within me. It makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. It opens prison doors and sets captives free. I've got a river of life flowing within me. Sometimes they change that. I've got a river of life flowing out of me, but the original hymn, I guess, says within me, which is still good. Spring up, O well, within my spirit, it says. Rise up and tell, so all could hear it. Spring up, O well, so I experience that life abundantly. I've got a river of life flowing within me. I, it started gushing up when God set me free. That I keep this flow is my only plea. I've got a river of life springing within me. Once I call his name, there's a flow within. It turns me from my day and makes him Lord again. As my spirit burns, Satan cannot win. Sorry. <laughs> Calling, oh Lord Jesus, keeps the flow within. There's such a strong anointing and presence when we start talking about this, the wellspring of life that is within us, that I literally cried for three days, two and a half days while I'm trying to prepare for this message and I have no idea what God really wants. I know what this is saying. But that I, that I keep the flow is my only plea. And focusing on Jesus keeps the flow in me. It's, 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 what, we, it's what I taught the last time. It's, it's about keeping focused on Christ and Jesus in you. And, and going deeper in this message, we'll, sh we'll show you what exactly we're doing. We never fully grow unless we dig deep. Just like, a, just like a plant, if the roots are in shallow dirt, the plant will never grow tall. Because it, it, it knows inside that it can be tumbled and torn out of the ground. It can be trampled easily. They have to go deep. In fact, most trees have the same amount of foliage and, and leaves and um, grow their branches out about as far as the same underground as well. Because they know... God made them that way, that they, just like what I was saying, they could get toppled over if not. So there's that strength in going deep, plus the water. When there's moisture and water in the earth, it has to go through the soil and the rocky ground in order to get to the, to the water and the life source. Now we're in a kind of a desert or, or trying time, and it seems like God is very far away. Um, his presence is, comes and goes, but you don't really feel that, that, that presence coming down and settling on you all the time. There are times of that and times of refreshing rain from the Holy Spirit. But when we're in that desert place, rain is scarce. And just like in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, any desert that you could think of, rain is scarce and, and running waters, and you, can, you can't really find it anywhere. It had to be drawn up, especially in biblical times. You have to go, you have to dig a well. You actually have to put effort in to find water and live in the desert places. Um, so it must be drawn out, dug down and drawn out from wells or, or, or taken from springs. It's not necessarily the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, like I said, or the rain that we feel in these difficult sessions, you know, difficult seasons. But it's during these times that the living water of refreshing needs to be drawn deep from our heart, from the fountain and wellspring of God. Back in 2017, we have a series called The Beginning. And I was, it started with me being very sick. I got, uh, I don't know what I had, um, some type of flu, but I was bedridden for days. I couldn't move. I was in a lot of pain. And it was, this is, you know, several years now, five years ago. And it started with me praying to God, you know, for several days, God, heal me. I need to be better. God, heal me. You know, I, I to the last day. 
before I started feeling better. I just, I prayed, I don't care if I ever get better. I just want you. And I want to go deeper in you. And I want to know you. And I want Jesus in me to rise up, period. That's all I wanted was I was focused on Jesus. All I want was God. I want to be pleasing to you. I don't want to act like out of my hurt or my, 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 my sickness. Who is, it's making me feel down and depressed. I don't want any of that. I just want to praise you. And, I, and, and all of a sudden, uh, as I, I, I started feeling better, I was uh, going through all these different experiences. I got, uh, well, not only did I get healed near, near immediately, um, but we were experiencing things that were like second level of the cross type things. Like I knew for a fact that I stepped over a threshold in the spirit because I went deeper, that, that I tapped into that wellspring and something started happening. The joy started bubbling up. The, 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 I was slain on my floor in the spirit for I don't know how long. It, was, it, it had to have been at least a half an hour before I was able to even get up off the floor. And, and it was just, it, there, there's so many things that happened during that time. I lost my, my, my need for all the stuff that my, I would normally have a preference for. Like I was drinking at least a pot of coffee a day at that time and I didn't, and I stopped wanting it. It was kind of like when, when you look back at, at um, your high school experiences or if you didn't have a good high school experience, I'm sorry, you could pray through that. But, it, but if you're young and in love, uh, that that feeling of uh, I don't I just you don't care about anything else and you're just in love with that or infatuated with that person and you and you just want to be around them and and cater to them it was just like I'd had that with God I had this an experience with God that I was just like I don't want anything but you and it became so real it was what we called the beginning. And we have a whole series that, that started from that second level experience that has not gone away, but it's waned enough to where he made us thirsty for it again, and now it's begun. It's five years later, and it feels, it's like now it's begun. If you get a chance, go back and look at that series, because... Things are in that that are that are now currently happening, and it's just it blew my mind. I I, went, I watched a few of the videos myself, and it was just like, wow, God is so cool. So many things are that happen outside of our time frame. God isn't in our box, I guess. But going deeper in God, focusing on Jesus in you, the hope of glory, it enables us to uncover the fruit of the Spirit. Why? The living waters are there. The rivers of the Holy Spirit are there. When, when we prayed, I, I, I told my dad, I noticed there's, some, there's, there's, a, there's something that happens often if you stay. You know, we, we pray through, like in the 60-day challenge, we, we utilize the forgiveness. We receive forgiveness for the garbage that's there. And... And he washes it away. And then we can release forgiveness to whosoever if there was a person involved in that situation. Because we received it first. But if you stay there, then what I mean is you stay releasing that forgiveness. You stay in that, that place where you're allowing the river to flow from your heart. That all of a sudden, you when you actually go deeper and you could you could you start to feel joy it's almost all the time you 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 will start to feel that little tickle that excitement that that god is here that you've tapped into something that's supernatural that god wants you to experience and he wants all Christians to experience it, but you've got to dig for it you got to you got to stay there you got to drop down you got to be open to release his presence, the rivers, like Jesus says, out of your heart 
the rivers are out of your belly, the rivers will flow. You come to him first and drink. It's so funny that it's joy that pops up first, at least for me. Because what? Isaiah, said, Isaiah 12, 3, it says, Therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Isaiah 12, 3. I thought that was fascinating. With joy you will, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And of course, you know, it's your strength that helps you dig it in. Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. It was with joy that, that Jesus was able to maintain while he was on the cross. The joy was set before him. It's what gave him the strength to die for us. In John, John 7, 37 through 39, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scriptures had said, out of his heart or belly will flow rivers of living water. And But by this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. So the, the Spirit of God flows like rivers from our Bible heart. How does that look? What does that look like? What well, it's his nature that emanates. And this is what got me so We know this already in this church. The nature is what emanates. You can't hide it. But his his nature is what emanates. Well, what's what is his nature? What what does the, what does the scripture say? And I think it's funny because it begins with joy when you're praying and you go deeper and you're and you're done with your your prayer session and getting cleaned up and you just sit there and you and you and you relax and you go deeper in him that joy is like the first thing that comes up. I thought it was neat, but it's but it's just like there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the most high and where he dwells. I just was like this is so cool. I don't know why he's telling me this stuff, but it's so, there's so much life on what's the drawing from the wells and the rivers right now. The Holy Spirit is doing something really, really cool. In Isaiah 11:2, 2, it says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. This is Isaiah 11, 2. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge of the, in the fear of the Lord. When I read this, I was blown away. And this is what got me for three days. And I hope I can get through this for you guys. You know what that means? I mean, really means and soak it in. Just, just breathe it in. In the spirit while you're in your prayer time this means that there's a river of wisdom a river of understanding a river of counsel a red a river of strength and might a river of knowledge and a river of the fear of the Lord that we can tap into, that we can allow to flow and emanate from us. If we would just dig down deep and stay there. <laughs> Proverbs 18.4 says, The words of a man's mouth are like deep waters, the wellspring of wisdom that is a flowing brook. Proverbs 16.22 Understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it. Proverbs 25, 20 verse 5. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. These wells that I'm talking about, 
They're found in the heart of every believer because why? Because that's where the Holy Spirit abides. That's where he dwells. We have access to it, but we seem like we seldom go there. <laughs> but God is telling us that we need to right now during these times. There is one caveat to this drawing of the water, that it's only the person who understands the ways of the Lord, it's only that person who will draw the waters out of the well. And of course it reminds me of, of Moses in Ezekiel, I mean in uh, Exodus 33, 13 I think. Show me your ways that I might know you. Show me your ways that I might know you. Now we might come across different types of wells, and one of which are the old wells that our fathers dug, and that, you know, I'm talking about the story of Isaac. And where he came across the, the wells of his father that had been filled by the Philistines. They were they were they were impacted and put put all back uh, mud and rocks shoved in them so that they become unusable. And I think that God is also speaking about untapping and unstopping those wells as well. And I think that that could be a that could be a whole nother sermon. But the just just for just as a side note though, the Philistine, um, the Philistines are kind of a picture of of the or a symbol of the world and all its all its attributes, its ways and um, the uh, you deserve a break today, all the self help garbage that's out there, everything that 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 you could think of, that, that you could pray through, that you could dig up on your own, is, is, is basically all the worldly garbage. And the Philistines were, were kind of a picture of that. Um, but what we are really pointed to, and what God is pointing to us with, about digging down deep and, and being able to, to um, partake in that river, it all culminates to a point in where we're, where we're at right now um, I believe is that he wants to develop in us a, a new wine skin, and I think that um, because he wants a fresh new anointing to come and flow, but we have to be prepared ourselves in order to be able to handle it. Um, there's there's um, there's a maturing process and a character development process that is also pretty much something that the that the Lord has been speaking to us. And revealing through different different um, venues, as well. Um, one of the things that we I, I found that hopefully some, one of us teaches on it was the fact that God is all about character development because you know He has to make the man, whether it's send you to a cave or, or the wilderness, to get it out of you. I mean, look at John, poor John the Baptist. He was out there his whole entire life for a, a six month ministry, but and eating bugs <laughs> and gross things. But anyway. Outside, I mean, outside of that, is that the, what I guess what I'm going to try to say is that the former things need to go, we need to forget about them, we need to move on. Um, one, of the, one of the ways that uh, he was speaking to us is, is through, there, there was a, a guy that had a revelation on the, the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. And this has to do with character development. And I thought it was just outstanding. And the way that he saw the gifts and the gifting um, that God freely gives, um, and that you could operate in any particular character level that you're at, as far as your your own uh, maturity, you can because their gifts are given without repentance, right? The the fruit of the spirit was given to so that you would you would have like a tempered 
part of that particular gift. And each of the giftings has, has a, it lines up with a fruit of the Spirit that you need to develop first before your gift flows through it properly the way that God wants it to. Because you can use your gifting for anything. Anybody can be a, a, a star anything if God gave you the gift to begin with. But you need to be able to have the maturity and the character development in order to actually fully grow and keep that gift going for what God's purposes are. Not your purposes or purposes of somebody else that wants, you know, whatever from you. Can't draw, take, you can't give something that you don't have. So if you don't have that character development in your gifting, you, you're only going to go so far. And, you, and crash and burn after that. So I thought that was f fantastic. The character development that God puts, built, he built stuff in. He doesn't make you do it, but he built it in so that you would, you would, you would be able to if you chose. Again, it's free will, right? So going back to the wineskin, in Isaiah 43, we see a common scripture that we often hear. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, and now it will spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. See, we're all talking about the wilderness and the, and the deserts here. Well, I am. I don't hear you guys talking. But it's what he's doing now. It's where we're at now as a church. And I believe it's more than our church that's, that's going through this. Um, we're going through it together. In order to know God more intimately, we must welcome this change. Change is a scary word. Holy Spirit initiated change, of course, you know. But it always, and in, in, in the Holy Spirit requires transformation and inspires and creates transformation. So change is always good when God initiates it and starts it. Always good. And it's always fruitful. So we don't have to clench our teeth and go, oh, no, I don't want to change. It's too much work and... As believers, we often resist change. Why? Because it messes with our comfort levels. When we talked about that in the first message, our comfort level needs to, needs to, we need to go deeper. We tend to like our traditions and our habits and the patterns that we've formed over the years. Those things that we've established over time, it, it just becomes uncomfortable to adjust to them. You know, I don't want to adjust anything. i got to... We want to we want to have you know church at ten thirty and ten o'clock and we don't we don't want to have to get up any earlier or later. We we became accustomed to it. That's a that's a little. But kingdom minded people, we need to be open to change. I'm saying that you know if 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 people merely respond from tradition and not from your heart. And we see this a lot. Um, those expressions, even if they're expressions of faith, uh, they become like dead works. Right? If it doesn't come from the heart. They keep on, they, they're like, they could be lifeless routines. And you know what happens if you do them often enough as lifeless routines of just doing things over and over again without any life and, and out of, not out of your heart? You open yourself up to a spirit of religion. And we don't want to be there. I don't. I don't want to be a. I don't want to be a. A Pharisee. Religious spirits always hold on to what God did. And resist what He is doing currently. They always do. And there are many. Of course, there's many examples in the Scripture, um, such as the Pharisees and some of the other religious leaders at the time, but. Even now, it's hard to, uh, to see, but believers a lot of times have regressed into that spirit and allowed it access that spirit of religion in them. And uh, even now, so it's, it's sad to see. One of the examples I thought was pretty interesting in the scriptures was 
that uh, it was in Luke 5. In Luke 5, 33, and Jesus says, well, he didn't say at that point, but the verse that begins with some people said, and this is in Luke 5, some people said to Jesus, the disciples of John fast and pray, and they do it frequently, and the disciples of the Pharisees do the same, but your disciples are always eating and drinking. What's up with that, he says. And Jesus replied, you can't make the wedding guests fast while the groom is with them, can you? The days will come when the groom will be taken from them, and they will fast, he told them. No one tears a patch from a new garment and patches the old garment. Otherwise, the new garment would be ruined and the new patch wouldn't match the old garment. And nobody pours new wine into old wineskins. And if they did, the new wine would burst from the wineskins and the wine would spill and the wineskins would be ruined. And that's Luke 5, 33. One of the first things that you look at here is some people said, and I'm like, who, you know, who are some people? But you know what Matthew knew? Matthew probably had it written down in a notebook somewhere. <laughs> he probably tried to get taxes from him. But he said in, in the, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, we have the same parable. But it says, it begins how? At that same time, John's disciples came and asked Jesus, Why do we and the Pharisees frequently fast, but your disciples never fast? And Jesus responded, The wedding guests can't mourn while the groom is still with them, can they? So th th he had his own take on it, of course. But he knew, <laughs> he knew who these people were that were asking. They were the disciples of John the Baptist themselves asking the question. They were ticked off. They were offended. Team John was really mad. <laughs> why are they, you know, why are you guys having a party of your, uh, you know, partying it up, eating and drinking all the time, and, and, and we're still, you know, in fact, our leader is in prison right now, soon to be beheaded, right? But our leader's in prison, and we've been doing this our entire lives following him and he, as a disciple for, for, for John the Baptist. And now you guys are just making a mockery out of our playbook, right? They're not going by the same playbook. Wine is symbolic of God's presence. And of course, Jesus was speaking of his followers fasting because his earth walk would end eventually and his physical presence would be gone one day. But he said, why, be, why, would, why would they be fasting? Because fasting is something that you utilize in order, it's a great thing to utilize to be able to hear God better, more clearly. But what if the Son of God is right there in your midst? You don't need to sit, you could actually hear him talking. <laughs> You don't need to sit and pray and, and fast, you know. And that's what he was saying um, in, in, a, in a summary, or a <laughs> Jason speak. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, and the wine will spill, and the wineskins will be ruined. What was really neat was... Um, that the Lord showed my dad a, 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 a symbolic picture of something that he couldn't figure out. And when he told me, it was like a, it was like the number eight, but it was on its side, like an infinity symbol. I immediately saw, going back this way, an hourglass of the two sections and the, and the, and the point in between being so hard to, or set so uh close together that you could only let a few grains out at a time and it lasts an entire hour to get that sand out from one side to the other, right? But then the Lord showed me it the other way and I saw two wineskins, the old and the new. The nozzle, you know, mouthpiece to mouthpiece. And what what the Lord was, was uh, 
speaking to me then was how I came up with part of this message that no one pours the new wine in the old wineskin. Now back in the day, wineskins were, were made of like uh, sheepskin or goat skin. And what they would do is they would do it, they would create the, and sew it all together and do it really quickly, fill it with wine, and then the wine would ferment, the, 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 the skins would swell and, and be pliable to what was inside them as the, as the wine fermented. And, and then um, over a long period of time, many years, the, eventually the skins would dry out. And what would happen is in order to make them new again, is what God wants to do with us in order to receive from this new move of the spirit that's happening is what they did with the wineskins is they soaked them. Well, first they emptied them, right? And what is wine a, a symbolic of? It's, it's symbolic of the presence of God. So anytime you're going through this dry season, know that that emptiness of the wine, he's only doing it so that you become thirsty thirsty for his presence not so that you give up and just lay there and die it's because he wants you to dig down deep he wants you to get into that well that wellspring of life and continue the journey but what they did was they soaked it in water in order to make it new again they soaked it in water several days they soaked them in water and then once they were, you know, they were emptied and then they were soaked in the water, like being washed in the water of the word. They were rubbed vigorously with oils, olive oil and what have you. Isn't that beautiful? They were made pliable again by allowing the Holy Spirit's interaction. Did you not see that too? This is, this is before they were able to be filled like new, again, with new wine that God has pleasant, presently for us and right now and soon, that, that they, were, they, were, they were dried, they were made thirsty, they were soaked in the water of his word and drank in the water. And then they were, they were, they were needed and, and, and made pliable again and, and soft by the oil of the Holy Spirit and the anointing. He wants us, he wants us to be there. He wants us to be willing and open to that change. The stuff that we had prior, we got to forget about. The stuff that, that, that God, the way that God moved in the past, we have to be open to how he's speaking to us now. That doesn't mean that we're throwing out the Old Testament or anything like that. No, get me wrong. But the things, we have a tendency over time to leave um, the, 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 the things of God and, and take them for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole thing about the first, the first message in this series is that it was all encompassed in the fear of, of the Lord. Like it doesn't, you can't start intimacy with God without first, you know, getting a good, gri good grip on the fear of the Lord. It's just like that. Here, you can't really do anything without intimacy with God because you don't know what you don't we don't know what he's going to be doing and how and how he's going to be speaking but I know for a fact that it has begun and this is the this is I don't know what this new thing is yet but I feel it bubbling up in my spirit just like those rivers I wouldn't have sat there and cried for days without and experiencing that and and coming up here and trying to to talk through it <laughs> my notes <laughs> without there's something somewhat of life on it right I wouldn't have taken the first part of my week going God where are you to where Friday I got this my notes set up it usually is the entire week it takes me but I, I had nothing for three days and was like God where are you what do you want me to speak on how do you want me to respond I am trying to not fall into the seven deadly seas myself, right? In order so that I can remain in, you know, just like what, you, what I said at the beginning, you're either in 
you're either in sin when you're when you feel that separation or God has you there for a reason. And so I'm 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 knocking out everything that I could think of that I'm in sin of. <laughs> and I'm praying through everything and I'm receiving forgiveness and I and I'm like I can't hear you. <laughs> Why can't I hear you? And this is just a small, tiny thing, you know, of me developing a, a sermon to, or a message or a teaching to give you. But it's, this, it's, it's, it's like on the bigger picture, it's for the church at large, right? It's, it's not just for this church. It's for what God is doing right now across the country, across the world. Um, he wants us to be able to develop a depth in him so that we are not swayed when things get hard. There are things that, that might get harder than they are right now. I, I don't know. I'm not, pro, I'm not being you know prophetic. I'm just saying that if they do, I don't, if we are listening to this sermon, if we are paying attention to God, we're growing in intimacy with Him, and we're going deep, then that's all we need. It's really all we, it's all we need. He will provide everything else. Just do it. Whether it's hard or not, do it. Um, and that's, that's his preparation for us as believers during this strange time. Right? I mean, it's, it really is a strange time. We really need to be emptied out of the old wine and forgetting what was behind. We need our, our skins to be dried, so to speak, made thirsty for His presence. We need to be soaked and washed in the water of the Word, clean up our acts. And then we need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us to soften our hearts where those hard places that have transpired. We have to get rid of our old playbooks. Amen? We need to allow the old to pass away so that the new can spring forth. We must remain willing and open and pliable to the change that's coming. And we don't want to miss this move. We don't want to be on the outside of this. Again, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scriptures said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit of those believing would receive later. Let's pray. With Jesus, our Savior in us, and the Holy Spirit transforming us, we have no excuse, Father, for persisting in immaturity, not going deep with you. Empty us out, Lord, so that we become thirsty for your presence. Thirsty for a new, fresh move of your living waters and the rivers of the Spirit in us. Let us operate in all the different aspects that you have called us to. And all the giftings that you've called us to, let us not ignore the gifts in us. Stir up the gift in us and allow us to go deeper, drawing from the wellspring of life. In Jesus' name. I think that we need to take in consideration. What the, what the Lord was speaking, even prophetically. And I'm not saying that I'm a prophet of any kind. I'm just saying this is what God is speaking to me. And what God was speaking to me is that we need to develop and really pay attention to our intimacy levels with Him, grow. There's much more that we, we, we have that God offers us that, that a lot of us don't take advantage of. We need to be able to become deeper, grow down deep, take the effort it takes, allow us to, to pray until we, we, we hit that joy pocket. Amen? And joy is our strength. 
there's so many things in the scriptures that, that, that you know, even the even the when we looked at the stories of the of the people that were being thrown to the lions and and how the the onlookers would say that they have a makarios or a life joy that was enviable. It's the joy that was their strength. We need to be able to tap into that at any given moment because that's where God is. That's where the Holy Spirit is. That's where the the, the living waters come from. Amen? The fruit of the Spirit. We're tapping into the fruit of the Spirit. Just like our children's books <laughs> teach. Amen? Yeah, I think in uh, closing, which... I think Jason sealed it real good. I want to reiterate the prophetic word that was given to us this week. And this is so strong and so powerful. Um, God, in our prayer time, said, watch what I will do. And then he changed it to, this is for the church. Then he changed it for, this is the church universal. So I'm hoping it goes out on YouTube and on others. But here's, here's four, four elements and it, to me, this is the most thus saith the Lord I've heard in a long time, except for Jason's message today. Uh, it's the same thing because he's actually at the second point. God said, watch what I will do. And I prophesy that to the peoples, to the church, to the family of God that God loves with all his heart. Watch what I will do. Secondly, this is Jason, I'm taking you deeper. Do you think you heard that message today? He wants you to go deeper. The third thing he says, you will be a partaker of the divine nature. And I'm emphasizing be a partaker because then you shall bear much fruit. That's the doing. I used to get kind of concerned when I would hear people say, what would Jesus do? And they'd get up in their, they'd get up in their intellect. No, uh, I think Jason, when I were talking, he says, what would Jesus be? And look at the Beatitudes. Look at the character change. Being is more important than doing. And you can get the emphasis on the doing cart before the horse, before the being. But God says, you will be a partaker of my divine nature. You're going to walk in that character. There's going to be a, a, an awareness that the anointing of God has taken on a whole new dimension in you, and it's him. And it's on the increase, and you're growing in the grace and the knowledge of God. And then the fourth, you shall bear much fruit. Now listen to this closely, because this is not for in a church building alone. He says, you, individually, as you go deeper in God and as you see this transformation, you're going to bear the fruit of your lips. All of a sudden, your words are going to have power. You're going to say things and people are going to cry. You could be around unsaved people and then you're thinking, I didn't think what I said was that important. No, it's the river of living water that's on the words that's doing the work. It's not your clever words, but you need to be able to be willing to tap into that. That's going to be the three types of fruit. You shall bear much fruit, number four. That's the do. But the be always comes before the do. Fruit of the lips. Righteous acts. Might not even be have words to it. It might be just kind deeds that you do that are going to be supernaturally inspired that you would do them. <laughs> Righteous acts. And thirdly, which is the vision of this church. Changed lives. Full stature has to do with maturity and a changed life, not information, not becoming some kind of scholar. And for the amount of years you've been in the church, you need to ask yourself to what degree have I been changed? And has anyone ever noticed the change in me? That was the entire mission for us as a church. I had a vision of a dome which would be the atmosphere of God that would be conducive to growth, love, acceptance, and forgiveness. But the three pillars under the foundation, the three pillars was, first of all, intimacy with God. Secondly, it would be transformation. That comes out of the intimacy if you do it right. And thirdly, demonstration, not lip service, but demonstration that God has accomplished something in your life. And then the four foundations underneath that temple, out of that bottom, and this is where we're at, 
Out of that shall flow rivers of living water, like in Ezekiel, wherever those waters flow, coming out of the base of the temple. They're going to flow. They're going to produce life. There's your fruit. So, Father, we just pray and prophesy this. That, And then a day after we got this word, God said, it has begun. And I, I can tell by the difference in the anointing on Jason's sermon, it's already begun. It's begun. So I want you to receive it right now. Father, right now, you who began a good work in me are continuing that good work. It has begun in me, and I'm receiving it, and I'm allowing it to penetrate, to become that partaker. I want to go deeper to be a partaker of that divine nature, and I will bear fruit, the fruit of my lips, fruit of actions, and the fruit of changed lives. I'm going to see people's lives change. We pray over family. We pray over uh, uh prodigals, we pray over uh, people that we run into, total strangers, but this is for the, the job place. This is not just for in a church building. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do, because after all, it has begun. If it's God initiated, I'm not concerned about trying to make anything happen. God will happen, right? He said, watch what I will do. I will build my church. They that labor to build, without God, labor is vain. So, Father, we seal this work today by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. I'm excited. I don't know about you. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, Forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit Forgive123.com.